All right, uh, it's a six scale. Oh, well, let me share my screen. This is six scale um, on, excuse me, on September 29th. Um, let me share the meeting notes in the chat. There it is. Okay. Um, so the okay. So for today, just uh, I think uh, so. We'll do we'll, we'll do the review of the periodic um, sharp results, and I saw a few failures that occurred we'll just see if um if it's just a flake okay periodic's looking good it was maybe the um let's take a look at the precedence okay a few failures I believe I did look at one or two of these and it seemed like, yeah, okay. It seemed like there was just something with things that didn't work. Okay. Yeah, this it seems fine. This is just a flake. It looks like it went away. Okay, that's good. I'll just take a quick look at these. One of these. Yeah, all looking really good. So within our thresholds, well, within our thresholds, well, within our thresholds. Okay, that looks really good. And then let's check out the periodic here. Or the, so a large cluster. I suspect we'll be seeing the same since I don't think we have anything that fails these. Yeah, okay. Looks about the same. Okay, that looks good. Um, Okay, uh, and then Ale, I saw you had a PR um, open. Do you want to go over that one real quick? Sure. Um, so there are a couple of things that um, I was digging into monitoring of this workflow from like user, user issuing a delete request to VMI and then all the way up to uh, the VMI is fin finalized. So there are like two steps uh, in, in this process. One is when the delete request actually comes in, it comes in as an update, um, which sets the deletion timestamp. Uh, and then uh, the controller looking at that deletion timestamp time does a bunch of uh, logic to uh, bring that VMI into final state. So either uh, um, failed or uh, succeeded. And then once it goes to failed or succeeded state, uh, then the finalizer is removed. A bunch of uh, work is done, like uh, removing all the files on the node and stuff like that. And uh, then actually the uh, object is released from uh, HCD. So what I what I noticed is that there are metrics available that that tell you uh, the histogram like uh, they export the histogram from you delete deletion timestamp all the way to final state, but there is no uh, metric for what happens to objects uh, from the final state to actually releasing from HCD. Um, and I think it is measurable um, from final state to releasing the HCD would be uh, looking for that final state and then looking for the delete event in the uh, informer. Um, 
so i there could be couple of metrics interesting there one is the sheer number of uh, objects that are uh, lying in that state where they are not being finalized for some reason you remember like we had a, a race bug um, regarding that where some objects were uh, staying in the failed state and um, that that could be a good um, metric and then other metric would be uh, the time it takes to go from um, uh, final state to releasing the um, object. So those are the two things that I could think of. But yeah, the, all of this was um, when I was digging into exporting uh, that metrics for audit logs, um, I found out that we don't actually have any uh, metrics for the other half of the process. Oh, so, okay. So we'll, um, well, so the other half of the process, it's out, since it's outside of Qvert, it's sort of a question here. Is, 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 since it's outside of Qvert, is it, the question is like, is it, should we track it? Because at this point in time, you know, we, the, the control plane has done all the work it can. And now it's, it's completely up to Kubernetes. It's, um, you know, to complete the, to complete the garbage collection. You know, in which case, like, you know, the, in terms of you know what we want to measure, um, you know this might be a little bit outside of it, and maybe there's already a metric for it um, that we can use. But in terms of like what we need, I, I think I think this will do. Like I think user delete. Um, so the time the user issues a delete, that first uptake call, we get the deletion timestamp all the way until the finalizer gets removed. I think is like that's that's the yes that's, that's like our yeah. Our control plane delete time. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the current PR, um, let me talk a little bit about what that PR does. Okay. Um, so um, we have an audit tool here that will collect all the metrics. Um, in that audit tool, I have added uh, two more percentiles. Um, that is 99 percentile, 95 and 50. Um, and all like, so in total, six six more uh, data points. Uh, one that goes from deletion timestamp to three that goes from deletion timestamp to succeeded, and then three that goes from deletion timestamp to failed. Um, okay. Currently, I think we should expect the failed deletion timestamp to failed uh, all the three to be zero because we are not introducing any failures. Um, all of our um, VMIs are successfully garbage collected and only then uh, the, the tests succeed. So for a successful run, it should be zero. But I have, in, in, I have it in there in case if we want to add a te test that um, introduces a failure and also checks for a failure path. Uh, yeah, so what we could do, yeah, it makes sense because so this is a, we we could generate this by uh, we we just need the the guests or maybe it's the vert launcher process to exit one is all we need to do and then it will be the container basically just needs to exit one and and then we get failed state otherwise we get succeeded so yeah it makes sense like because we're gonna get both these cases probably this one the most common in our testing but we could very easily generate this yeah it makes total sense. Yeah, and so we have 90, 99, 95, and 50 percent. This is exactly similar to what uh, we have from creation timestamp to uh, running stake. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Cool. All right, that's a great addition. I think that'll be. Um, this is going to be really good. Like in that, um, in that uh, six hundred PM job where we actually wait and the cleanup that'll be awesome to see see how these do by comparison to the to the creates cool okay nice okay. okay um really quickly regarding the first topic um on whether this is a cube or uh, cube kubernetes or cube word thing um yeah. i actually am not really sure um, whether it's a kubernetes thing alone because there are some uh, informers that Kubert has written, like uh, informers in Word Tender, which deals with um, uh, cleaning up the files. 
and it from what i remember it is uh, it is happening after the like after final state and in between uh, uh, releasing the the object so i let me try to dig it up whether there is some action or some kind of uh, garbage collection that is happening in in between uh final state and releasing the object uh if there is something happening then um i think we should track it in terms of metrics okay yeah let's see what you find uh that's interesting because yeah. the bug i remember which where the uh finalizer um was where object stayed in final state as in the object was in failed state but finalizer was not removed was precisely the bug where race was happening in this state so um I, like my recollection is little bit uh, off right now i need to go back and dig into it but okay. I, i feel there is some logic we that is executed Hmm, that's interesting. So I guess like see what I was my understanding was is that the cleanup any sort of like the cubert garbage collection was done in this period, you know, basically this being the the base the final state beginning final state ending um unless I guess the only exception to that would be if something needs the pod needed to be removed after I guess because I I don't know why it wouldn't or i guess maybe it has to, maybe the guest has to be terminated so it doesn't have to so there has to, but i guess no in here like hmm, i don't know i guess I have to think about it because i guess if we're waiting for the guests to terminate because we don't want to cause any damage to it by doing any garbage collection we're waiting until this state and then we're doing garbage collection so i guess it could be possible yeah. i mean i guess fat something is in the file system perhaps like some things like in um like the the um, ghost records or the, the um anything in cubert yeah, dev yes exactly the ghost records are are the ones so what i remember is word word handler has a bunch of files on on the node that represent a particular vmi uh, mm-hmm. so it does like it it does a watch on those uh, socket files in order to look for uh, events and once this is failed or succeeded then it will go ahead and delete those ghost records and release the object from finalizer uh, ah right so okay so it's holding on to the finalizer until the ghost record so okay but then we are still technically in the final state though right because the finalizer hasn't been removed correct so but that state okay. is different from the fail like the, the right it's different than this of pbm yeah the mm-hmm. the way it described so I see, yeah, I see. although i i'm i mean um, i still need to go refresh my memory on whether the workflow i'm talking about actually happens or whether that bug happened because something in between the failed state didn't uh, reconcile properly so that's something i need to check but yeah i'll i'll do it this week Uh, yeah yeah basically yeah so there's a tricky part here it's like so right this is the end so yeah there there yeah i see how there is because it's basically we would declare something as you know in the final basically exiting the final state and the next thing we're supposed to do is remove the finalizer but if there's any garbage collection that's done or being done that's failing and we fail to do this then what what state are we in we're actually or or sort of in between here. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then if if any for any reason VMI gets there, I think chances are that it would stay there. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I remember right, I remember we 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 we've run into this bug. This was the um this was the the ghost records were not cleaned up and essentially what happened is the node restarted yeah. and and just the vmis were just sitting around and no get restarted yeah because we weren't able to launch any more vmis finalizer logic was waiting for was not able to read that file so yeah, yeah. I, like a bunch of things went wrong but 
I think these are the metrics that would, uh, you know, uh, bring out these error cases like in in the PRs itself. So. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see if like if we don't. Yeah, see, it's tough. The the removing the finalizer step is like. Um, You, uh, oh, maybe you can check um, when, so I don't remember when, when the, met, the delete metric was written. I'm, I, I don't remember which, if it hangs off of this or if it hangs off the same function that does this. I think the matrix hangs off the state. So what the matrix does is it, it is an informer on the VMI and as soon as it sees the deletion timestamp. That's the old time it will use. And then yeah. uh, the phase transition to final or succeeded is the new time it will use. And then it will observe the difference. Well, so what I remember though, is like, is that when this happens, like that these things are supposed to happen like very close to one another. That's like, like they're almost in the same function call. That's what I remember, right? And, and, and that's where, um, it's in, so it's, I can look it up real quick because it's in the, um, it's in the PR. Because I remember looking at this. Yeah, um, so from the control loop, it's just the next state. That, that's what you're trying to say, like immediately next state. Yeah, it's like, it's almost like, it's like we're talking lines of code, like, um, like apart. Um, Let's see here, phase transitions, not here. Oh, okay, so wait, no, I don't see it. So let's see. Uh, uh, oh, okay, no, I, okay, I don't have it here. Okay, so I thought I, I, thought, it, I thought I did, I don't. So the, I just remember looking at it. I remember looking at the, the line that this occurs. Um, yeah, okay, I, I think we'll just, just have to take a look at it again because I don't, I, I just don't remember. Sure, yeah. No but I what I what I recall is like it was like the same function call basically the thing that processes failed and succeeded that sets it into like failed and succeeded was like um, in the same function that was supposed to remove the finalizer. Um, but there might be some steps in between, which is what you're getting at, which is this, and and if those yeah, fail, so then we don't get to this. That makes me think if those steps are happening asynchronously, so. Like the controller is making the fail to remove finalizer like immediately, and then the um, word handler is also uh, removing those ghost records after fail or succeeded, um, and then both of them happening asynchronously. Like that could be one workflow, but I'm not sure. I need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good open question. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Elaine. That makes sense. And then I have another small update. Okay. Um, so you remember I was um, like, once we were seeing the endpoints uh, matrix being reported in audit tool, that was um, kind of a little bit off. Um, I looked at the um, the test clients and the test clients do not use uh, those metrics. So those metrics are purely coming off uh, word controller, word handler, word API, and one more webhook. Uh, and the reason was that even though both of them use the same client, you need to like import Promete monit monitoring client Prometheus package. Uh, and that's only imported in those four packages. So um, I posted an update on Slack uh, asking those questions and I, I think I've found answers. So I just wanted to give a heads up. So this is the one where you said like, where we were talking about um, the, um, I think it was back here when we were talking about what, um, what were the clients that were doing these, is that what it was? Yes, correct. 
So for once, I thought that uh, the end-to-end -end test clients and the uh, the clients used in the um, in the actual API server, all of or well, even controller and word handle, all of those share the same logic of um, monitoring the metrics by intercepting the REST call. Uh, but those metrics are only enabled for um, for the four packages that I mentioned, which are on the server side. Uh, those are not enabled for end-to-end -end tests or any other packages. So then how does it affect uh, the way we read these? Then? I'm sorry, what? So how does it affect the way we read these metrics then? It does not. That's what I was trying to say, that okay. those questions were... So th there was an open question whether it does or not, does not. Um, and uh, I'm saying that it does not. Though these metrics are only coming from four, uh, four components, aggregated uh, word API, word controller, word handler, and the webhook. Yeah, okay. All right, that makes sense. Cool, all right, thanks for the update on, on that. So the client. Okay, cool. All right, I don't have anything else. Um, hey, Andre, I saw you joined. I don't know if you've got anything I, else I, you want to add. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just I, uh, tried to reach you because I would, would like to tell you that we are releasing DDesk finally. Congratulations, that's exciting. Yeah, um, the only issue that I would like to talk to you is that it's without GPUs for now. Let me explain you why. <laughs> Let me put the link here on the chat for you know. Um, uh, GCP doesn't allow uh, uh, on the BIOS to enable VTD IO MU equals true on the kernel. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> GPUs doesn't work without that, correct? There is no workaround. Uh, yeah, I think you need to enable IOMU. Yeah, I don't. We fight big, <laughs> as you can see on my last one. <laughs> Message here. They say not working. It's on the roadmap, but not working yet. For you know. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna release the service as is without the GPUs. <laughs> so what does this what does this mean then for for you guys? Very all the games don't don't work and many things uh AutoCAD uh don't gonna work, but we need to start with something. Okay, we yeah. cannot wait anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. Yeah, okay. I mean, what are they? Uh, so what's, I guess, sounds like they're working on it. No, I'm open to discuss, even to move to another data center. Any suggestions? Oh. We try uh, Amazon. Uh, why we are not in Amazon or Azure is because they, they, they charge for the traffic between between regions, and mm -hmm. this is too expensive for us because all the traffic uh, the files are stored on the US, and the users are logged in. For instance, uh, with his desktop uh, in Australia, we through the pipes uh, of Google we access the files inside uh the us storage to be com government compliance we understand mm -hmm. and there are lots of pains <laughs> any suggestions is is welcome brian okay <laughs> i i'm not sure i uh i'm not sure andre i don't know i would have to think about it um a little bit who are the, the guys that has lots of GPUs from NVIDIA? That's the, my question for you. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Like, as in, are you asking like who are the like customers who run clouds with GPUs? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Other than Amazon and Azure. Um, I don't have a list. I, I don't have a list off the top of my head. Okay. okay. But, <laughs> but but if any if help is welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can try and connect you and find that for you if you want. Wonderful. Okay. Anyway, uh, we have NVIDIA G4s on the lab. Works perfectly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you, Work. well, would, I think it would help me, Andre, if you, I, because I, you've talked about like your use case. All right, would you be able to send me an email with like a, a more detail about your use case yeah. and the requirements? That would help me, I think, further the conversation to like understand what you're exactly what you're looking for. Like, because you're talking about like, like what were the requirements you had on on using GCE and you know what were your requirements on AWS and you know whatever any gaps and things like that I, that would that would help. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna write it down for you. Okay. okay. Anyway, wonderful job. Are you working? I saw uh, my my technical team uh, are seeing the the performance parts that you are in charge. This is an amazing job. Please keep doing it. <laughs> sure. Oh, I'm happy you guys are seeing some improvements. And yeah, we've got, I think we've got a bunch of more other things planned in terms of other metrics and visibilities and, and trying to discover more problems. So yeah, I'm well, happy to hear the feedback. Thank you. <laughs> and good work to the team too. I mean, it's not, it's not just me. It's everyone that's been yeah. here and worked on it. <laughs> You're just the coordinator. <laughs> Yeah, we're all, we're all we're all working together on this, so it's the yeah. community's done a great job. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Anyway, uh, if you can help me any shape or form, are very welcome. <laughs> sure. Yeah, just send me an email with like what I asked, and we can um, I would try and figure something out. Yeah, wonderful. Well. Um, in the meantime, I uh, appreciate if you can test the solution yourself as a person, <laughs> okay? Sounds good. Cool. Oh, Andre, thanks for the thanks for the info and uh, the congratulations again. That's that's exciting. Yeah. Always a, it's I'm always nerve wracking to get the get the the product release out the door and yeah, so that's cool. Happy to hear. It's pretty awesome. Ben, thank you so much. Anyway, thank you, cool. Ally. All right. I think I think we're good for for the meeting for today. Thanks all. Okay. Thanks folks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.